My dear old mum, God bless her, she'd be looking down from above, sitting alongside the big fellow or the big lady. She'd be shaking her head saying, oh Martin, you're still on those motorbikes. <laughs> But my mother once told me a story about our family history. Apparently, way back in the 1860s sometimes, my great, great, I don't know how many greats grandmother, arrived on a sailing ship from England into the small town of Wellington that had just become the capital of New Zealand. And from there, she walked through the muddy track and bush north to the town of Palmerston, the home of the Kiwi Badger these days. And uh, Palmerston was later renamed Palmerston North because there was a, another town called Palmerston in the South Island and they laid claim to the name first. <laughs> anyway, so my great great whatever great grandmother arrived, trudged through the bush, became the, the midwife in this little village of Palmerston. Now she would have taken three months, six months, whatever it was on the sailing ship to get here, then walked that, I'm not sure, I'll have to look up how far exactly it is, and lived out her life there. She would never have gone back to, to England. The world was a huge place. You jump forward to my parents' generation, they were both born in the early 1920s. They are no longer with us, either of them, obviously. Well, not obviously, but they are no longer with us. Neither of my parents travelled outside of New Zealand except for my mother. Took a very brief trip to Australia in her later years. Anyway, so apart from mum's little trip over to Aussie for a, a couple of weeks, she never left New Zealand. And my father never left the North Island in his whole life. They had six kids. All of us have travelled to one degree or another. Some were away only for a couple of years, some were away for many years. I spent a couple of years travelling and two, two lots of one year away. So when I was travelling and when my siblings were travelling, there was no such thing as emails or FaceTime or Facebook or anything like that. And so you'd write a letter home once a month, if you're lucky, once every six months, <laughs> if you're me and the letters would be quite long and tell everybody that you're alive and what you're up to. Well now, my kids are getting to that age. The non-resident teenager who you've met in a few of my videos is currently in Germany. When he left school at the end of uh, 2015, all he wanted to do was travel. And so he, he had uh, work that provided him some savings and away he went. So he's been in Germany for quite a few months now and just before New Year's Eve this uh, few weeks ago there was a knock on our door and wifey was home and uh, I'd just gotten up from night shift and I hear this Oh, how, how are you? And it was my son's girlfriend and I thought, oh damn, where's my pants? <laughs> because <laughs> I'd just gotten out of bed. So I ducked into the kitchen out of the way. And then the whole level of that noise went up another notch because my son had come home from Germany for four weeks. Around about the same time, my daughter down in Hastings with the two little kitties, they have an au pair and at the moment uh, a young lady, a young woman from Canada, she's 25, she found out that one of her siblings had um, was having issues back home and so she immediately booked a flight and went back to Canada for 10 days just to support her family and make sure everything was okay. So these youngsters are thinking nothing of all of travelling to the other side of the world just for a matter of a few days. It's amazing. The world truly, truly has shrunk. And no longer is it a matter of writing a letter every now and then. Now we've got FaceTime and Facebook and emails and text messages and things. It's just amazing. The world has shrunk 